We're building the Mini Pet from Tynemouth Software and the future was 8-bit. So let's do it. Let's open our bag of bits and sort through it. There's a good rule of thumb when it comes to soldering parts onto a PCB. Start with the lowest components and work your way upwards. We're going to start with the resistors so we can put the other bits back. By sorting the resistors into values it's going to make things easier when it comes to assembling the board. Okay, so let's sort these out. Right. So, red, red, red. Resistors are colour coded. The different combinations of colours indicate the value. Black is zero, brown is one, red is two, and so on. 2K2. Fortunately, there's a very nice list printed in the manual to help us. Brown, black, pink. Quantity 5 is brown, black, pink, 10k. And knowing how many there are of each value makes it easier to sort. But it's still a good idea to cross-check against the colour code. Brown, black, red, 1k. <laughs> My eyes aren't what they used to be, and some of those colours are hard to make out. But we can always fall back on the good old multimeter. If in doubt, measure it. 75 ohms. OK, purple, green, black. Right, so that's that one. Okay, so that's all our resistors sorted out. So, the manual gives us a two page spread showing the layout of the board with each resistor highlighted. It's just a matter of putting each resistor in the right spot. but we tend to point them in the same direction, purely for neatness and aesthetics. Once inserted, we bend each leg over slightly so it doesn't fall out. Then we can solder it. and finally cut the legs off. That's the two 470 ohm resistors done. Okay. Just 24 more to go.
The next components to add are capacitors and diodes. We have three values of small ceramic capacitors. The procedure is much the same as for the resistors. I've sorted them by value. They come on paper strips, so this is very easy. And once again, the manual has a nice two-page spread showing the position of each capacitor and its value. As with the resistors, ceramic capacitors can be inserted either way round. So with the diodes. These most definitely do have a polarity. This is indicated by a band at one end and this corresponds to the thick bar printed on the circuit board. There are two values of diode, 1N4001N and 1N4148. The single 4001 is marked on the board so the other three positions must be 4148s. Part 2 complete. Crystal and transistor. There's the transistor. There's the crystal. The crystal has two pins and can go in either way round. This is a 16 MHz oscillator and gets divided down by the circuitry to the 1 MHz clock that we're used to actually slightly more or less, depending on whether we've got NTSC or PAL video outputs selected. The transistor has three pins, and we match the flat side on the transistor to the flat side on the board. It's a BC548B. Now we get to open the big bag. Yes, it's time for... Da, da, da. Sockets. Hands up if you thought I was going to say chips. Well, you were wrong. The sockets are arranged on the foam in exactly the same positions as they are on the board. So it's simply a matter of transferring them over but we still want to check that they're the right way round. The notch on the socket indicates pin 1 on the chip and on the board this should be on the left hand side. I'm using some heat resistant captain tape to hold them onto the board.
Okay, that's enough of that. Let's just skip to where I've got all the sockets on. A quick inspection with the hand magnifier to see if there are any solder bridges or bad joints. And there are none that I can see. Now we come to the resistor array. These packs each contain several resistors, with pin 1 common to them all. So we must be careful to put them in the right way. The dot on the pack goes to the dot on the board. We're going to hold these down with more Captron tape. And we'll give it another quick inspect with the magnifier. Okay, jacks and connectors. and tape. There's only one electrolytic capacitor, axial 100 microfarads, 25 volts. It's important to get these the right way round. The white arrow stripes point to the negative and the can's got an indent at the positive end. Negative goes to there, positive goes to there.
that just leaves the three connectors. RGBI, composite video and the power jack. Of course, let's not forget the all-powerful Kapton tape. Last parts in the bag are the piezo sounder and the LEDs. These all have a positive and negative, so we must get them the right way round. <coughs> Says remove seal after washing and there's a warning in the label. There's a warning in the manual as well. That's as far as we're going to get for part one. Next time we'll be building the keyboard and adding the chips. If you've enjoyed this video please click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to see more. Until next time, see ya!